Hello everyone, and welcome to another Andrew and Kelly video. This time we are going to talk about our top three most impactful movies or television shows that we saw in 2018. Now keep in mind, that doesn't mean movies or television shows that actually premiered right. in 2018. Just the stuff we saw right. in 2018. So I saw uh, 59 movies last year, uh -huh. 18 theatrically and 29 TV shows. Uh, also keep in mind that I do a series called Debut Review, so uh, 12 of those TV shows were only one or two episodes. So, I saw 91 movies last year. Um, 92 if you count the one that we watched last night, but I've seen that before, so I don't know if you want to count that or not. Um, so I saw 91. I saw 49 of those in the theater, and I saw 42 of those in the comfort of my own home. Um, either streaming or on DVD. As far as television shows go, there are nine that I actually watch, and I watch them continuously. So I watched those nine, and then I attempted ten others, and I won't be continuing any of them. But I did, mm. the ten that I tried, I, I, I really did watch them. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't count them up. I'd have to look, but I think I only saw, like, three movies. Uh, three of the films were films I had seen before. Right. And I think that was... Uh, the films we've watched in the last couple of days, Millennium Actress, Jim Cotta, and When Harry Met Sally. Right. When Harry Met Sally, I didn't put on my list because it was something that I have seen. So mm -hmm. everything on my list are new to me things yeah. that I've never seen before. Also, the television, the 29 TV shows I watched, um, yeah. if I watch, for example, I watched both seasons of Stranger Things, I just counted that as one TV show. Right. So. Like, I, I started, what did I, Shameless, I think, mm -hmm. was this. I started that this year, and I'm like, which is actually very, very good. But, um, and I watched it. I watched it from the beginning. All right. So, <laughs> since I only have so much battery yes. life because I forgot to bring my charging cable and Hold a replacement battery, let's power on through. So, what was one of the most impactful things you saw the last year and why? Okay, so I'm going to start with the theater, my theatrical releases, and the one that was most impactful, not to be confused with my favorite, was Searching by, mm. insert name here, because I, I haven't heard the director's name pronounced, okay. and this was his day but um, theatrical movie, and it was great, starring John Cho, and mm -hmm. I, first off, let me just say, it was awesome. I don't know if you saw Searching, um, it came out in August. It was wonderful. I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was, um, as a movie itself, great. The reason why it was impactful is due to the fact that it was told, if you recall, this is the one that was told specifically through like social media videos, um, Skype type things, telephones. There was no zero times that it cut away and it was like just a... A camera following a dude it was and the thing is, is that this this in order to do a movie like that you would have to have a very specific script and thankfully this script worked well for that but also the thing that was very interesting about it is that this script could have been shot in another any way this could have been like a very conventionally shot movie showing a father going through his computer and looking at other um you know, uh, social media accounts and stuff of his daughters who goes missing. He, I mean, in, you know, with the camera over his shoulder. Like, there was no, quote-unquote, reason to shoot it the way that it was shot, although mm -hmm. it somehow added something. It was just the idea of, like, how we are so disassociated with people anymore and, like, just the idea that, you know, you can... You don't know anybody anymore. And that was kind of sort of sad that the father was, like, going to a deep dive through his daughter's... Uh, social media and, 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 and all these things. And there were some things that they made up, like uh, sites, text, uh, like websites and stuff that people can share videos and things mm -hmm. that were made up for this movie. Oh, or not. I am so... I don't know what Vine is. Vine, <laughs> so, like, Vine was a thing. Anyway. Vine, but, like, but that's the thing. is like I'm so untech savvy, it's not even funny. So like maybe they were actually all completely going through things that um, actually exist. And But it, it worked. It, it worked and it was told in a way. And the, unfor the fortunate slash unfortunate thing is that this isn't going to be repeated often because it's not 
like I said, there, there's a specific script in which you would have to have a movie completely told through, you know, AOL chat. Well, not. That's how old I am, guys, <laughs> that I went to hangouts or whatever that is. But So you'd have to have a certain script to actually have an entire movie done that way. But I think that having this one out there mm -hmm. successfully executed an actual good script, a good story anyways, kind of breaks a mold into other ways of filmmaking like Tangerine mm -hmm. did a little while I never saw Tangerine which I really want to see it was shot completely on an iPhone I just feel like perhaps this can break you know it is definitely outside the box thinking and I respected it and maybe we can see in the future more in it'll be interesting what this guy continues nice. to do yeah it uh it feels like it's just gonna be a gimmick movie but i heard it was really good and it did and i felt the same way i was like what can you possibly how deep can you get like like if you read my text messages boring boring nude boring <laughs> like it would just yeah it just would be boring but this was kind of although yeah so cool. so yeah that was my first one all right i am a fan of peter jackson Oh, yes. I am a fan of old school Peter Jackson. Um, like, uh, you know, Bad Taste and, so, and uh, uh, Brain Dead, or what's the other alternate title for that one? Um, I've seen it. I forget what it, was, what it is. I but, saw uh, Evil. Isn't he Evil Dead, too? Not, no, no, that's no, Sam what's, I saw another Peter Jackson, though, that I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I like puppets. Uh, I love Dark Crystal. Yes. I love Labyrinth. Uh, I loved uh, Mirror Mask, which was a film that came out you oh, know, yeah. long, uh, in the like Fraggle 2000s Rock. somewhere. Down a Fraggle Rock. Down a Fraggle Rock. Right. Um, I liked Trolley in the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. I didn't really care so much for Mr. Rogers, but like, oh, Trolley. Yeah. So I, I like puppetry. I like uh, Peter Jackson. I really like you know, old school Peter Jackson. So I, I was really excited to finally see Meet the Feebles, right. uh, which is one of his earlier works. And it's one of those... Um, uh, uh, naughty puppet movies. And it's like, oh, okay. Because, you know, I, I like disgusting humor and behavior and puppets and that juxtaposition is oftentimes a lot of fun. Um, so, uh, Meet the Feebles is definitely one of my most notable films for 2018 because I was uh, completely taken aback by how utterly boring the damn movie is and just how phenomenally bad it was. Um... That's so sad, man. I know. It, 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 it's weird because it, I like puppets. I like early Peter Jackson. You, you'd think that combination would be great, but Meet the Feebles is just terminally dull. It's a bad, bad, boring movie. Um, not that there's nothing to admire. I, I do like a lot of the puppet work. I like a lot of the uh, design of some of the puppets. It's really neat. Because uh, they have, you know, hand puppets, but they also have uh, full suit puppets right. that are worn Those by are actors running around. The only ones that I kind of, because I've only seen like the box art, yeah. and I think it has that big pink ish. Uh, the hippo dude person, on it. yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a film that's so bad, I would say it's not even really worth checking out that's out of so curiosity. Upsetting. And w one of my perhaps failings as a amateur film critic, is when I don't like something, when I find something really bad and boring, I have trouble communicating why, because my brain won't devote any space for it. So I saw Meet the Peoples, I think over the summer, and six months later, about all, I can't give you any specifics as to what I found boring and why it didn't work as a film. All I can remember is it was just a really bad, boring movie. And um, unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's a negative thing, but that's something that when I think back over the year, that's something that just sticks out for me. Um, so, we've got people walking around. I'm like, we should close the door. Yeah. Ah, it's fine. Eh. Uh, so, yeah, Meet the Feebles, incredible disappointment to me, but, um, oh well. Yeah. Next. Okay, um, so, 
since my first move, my first uh, discussion was most impactful at the Cineplex. My second most impactful was in the comfort of my own home on my iPad, where I watched M, the 1931 Fritz Lang, uh, Peter Lorre starring uh, film. It was fantastic. Uh, I don't, I went in not really, I don't think I knew what to expect. I had no, I actually, sometimes I, you just hear like, you have to see M and I'm like, mm -hmm. And thusly, I will see M. Yes. <laughs> and so I didn't know really what it was about. Um, funny, subtitled, didn't know it was in German. Didn't know, like, I guess this is me being like, oh, hey, Knew Peter. nothing about it. I, and, I, I and, knew who Peter Laurie is. And I know is, Peter Laurie. So in my head, oh, Peter Laurie. And you always hear the name Fritz Lang. You're like, oh, Fritz Lang. Of course, it's going to be great. But um, so, yeah, Peter Laurie is apparently uh, a German. <laughs> okay. Um, so now all the comments, I can't wait to read them. They're like, what's wrong with you, Kill? Uh, it was fantastic. And here's why it was so impactful. It was so impactful because I, um, didn't know what to expect. It turned out to be something amazing, but I also have, um, we talk about it a lot about all the old films and sometimes there are just, uh, stereotypes, uh, in these old films and this film didn't do it. And what I mean by stereotypes is like, you know, the woman is always hysterical. Women mm -hmm. don't have any personalities. They're just the objects for men. Right. Everything also is kind of, I always have this, uh, and it's a generalization and it's unfair stereotype of the past that everything happened to be like, oh, technical, or even though this was a black and white film, but everything's mm -hmm. happy and we don't go deep and we don't, you know, go there. And this movie went there. Like it, <laughs> it, it's, um, Peter Lorre is, is actually the bad guy. He is the antagonist of the story. And he is a child murderer who gets his jollies with children. Like, it, it's, it's, it's deep. It's, maybe that's why it's also German. Like, you know, American audiences are like, let's not make a movie like this. And he and plays Criterion it. And was no, you, you will need watch this. a movie like this. But it goes there. And there's a moment that he's, um, Peter Lorre sees a child. Like, he's, he's looking in a train store and he sees the trains in the window of the store. And, um, there's a reflection of a child playing in the street and you can see him. Um, the direction is interesting enough that uh, he goes through this. He doesn't want to be bad. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to have this desire. He doesn't want to do it. It's and you an can see compulsion. him struggling mm -hmm. with himself and thankfully the parent comes and is like, oh, stop playing in the street, Teddy, or whatever the heck the child, you know, whatever a child's German name would be. But anyways, uh, and it was just, I was taken aback because I like it when I am proven, I like being proven wrong. Um, but I do, I like being proven wrong. I like being shown like that there are good movies out there that are willing to go places even if they were made in 1931. And I, I remember it so specifically, you know, now. And I watched it, I mean, granted, I only watched it a couple months ago, but it's still, it's very resonant. And I, I started my day with that movie. Which, and I'm talking like 9 a.m. I'm like, I'm going to watch M oh, this good, morning. Good, good, feel good morning movie. <laughs> to start start the day off right. And it's, and I was like, it was just, it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I liked it and I'm happy. So Criterion has good taste. Yeah, very good okay. taste. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have watched it, but then uh, Warner Brothers decided that the film history isn't important. Right. At least not as important as making all the money, so they oh, no, canceled no, no, no. Filmstruck and I didn't get a chance to watch it. But, <sighs> but hopefully oh, well. soon. Yes. Criterion will have their own streaming service and it'll be great. Okay, so uh, another notable film I saw in 2018 was Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. Yes! The commercials previews look so good the trailers look the, funny yeah i i know i i watched it on a whim i didn't see it in the theater i think i saw it on netflix um but i i watched it on a whim because i had seen the uh, the previews in the um uh, i had seen a movie trailer and i went that actually looks kind of funny well, uh, all right maybe, maybe i'll it watch it sometime yeah. and uh, weird al does the theme song so how bad could it be I like and it. i watched it and it is genuinely really funny and uh heartfelt and it doesn't overstay its welcome it's not like a two and a half hour movie uh it's low budget but it works within its means and very well it, it's uh, impressively creative um it, it's it was just a fun little movie that i thoroughly enjoyed Aww. front to back and um I, I think that I, I had almost no, even though the, the trailer made it, I said, oh, that looks fun. I really had no expectations. I think that's 
why this one is so impactful. Sometimes for me. that's so good going is because, in that oh way. Oh my god, this is just really sweet. I, I love this. And there's one scene in particular that that uh, sticks out for me above all others. And um, the premise of the movie is there there are two troublemaking kids, uh, and the principal antagonist, who is the principal of the school. Or the, oh, the principal antagonist. Get the it? Principal. Yes. <laughs> so, um, what's interesting is is the movie goes takes the time to humanize the principal rather than you know crotchety old no fun dude. You know, uh, the kids uh, somehow hypnotize him and turn him into Captain Underpants, and um, but then they revert him back to the principal, and they're like, and they drag him back to his house, and like, dr- like, like physically drag oh, him because he's unconscious. So they physically drag the guy back to his home. I hope they use a dolly because he won't have scraped the pants think, or I, something. I think they use like a, a you know, a, a, not a wheelbarrow, a wagon or something like okay. that. Not uh, a rider. But they're like. We're in Principal Johnson's uh, house. Let's look around at stuff. And they run around the house, and it is, and the house is like the loneliest place ever. There's no pictures on the wall. Uh, the kitchen has like one plate. It's like one your pl- kitchen. It, it's like my house actually. It, like there's one plate and one fork. Um, the, the the bedroom is pretty much empty except the living room is like one chair in the middle of the room and a TV facing the television. Yeah, exactly. That's really funny. There, the, the bedroom has you know a bed and just a, a principal shaped impression in the center of the bed that they roll him into. <laughs> and what what's hilarious it, he's is he's starfish. <laughs> yeah, just pretty much, pretty much you know just uh, you know like snow angel or spread eagle kind of thing. And what what really sells it is that the kids are looking at the they're they're like oh we're gonna look through all this stuff and they're just like this is really sad. Oh, I feel like really bad for him now, <laughs> you know. And you do here like oh my god this this guy is just miserable and alone. <laughs> I think he's just jealous of these two kids' friendship more than he is really upset at their. Um, immature antics at school uh Uh, so they decided to you know try and set him up with the lunch lady or something like that um but it's 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 just an element that i really wasn't expecting in the movie because they 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 they're in his house and they're like oh my god this is this is so sad and when a child thinks that i feel bad (laughs) for for antagonizing our antagonist (laughs) because he's He's just a sad, lonely man. That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Captain Underpants. I, I, I unexpected. Yeah, very un- excited. Unexpected. That's cool. So that's, that's I remember you, me you showing year. me the preview for that. And it looked good, but mm-hmm. I never saw it because I thought, oh, that's going to be one of those, one of those that's yeah. like, yes, the preview looks funny, but you know for a fact it's going to be schmaltz. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, me- it, it, it is. It's called Captain Underpants. That is the level of humor you can expect from the show. Right. Um, I think the villain is Professor Poopy Pants or something like that. Um, yeah. That's the level of humor you're in for, but it it is genuinely sweet and charming, and 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 I thought funny, so I, I quite enjoyed the show. Yeah. Okay, so my final one will be on the television side, mm-hmm. and um, the best thing I saw on television all year is uh, the Jesus Christ Superstar Live. Fantastic, but that's not the most impactful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna unfortunately discuss uh, what's it called? Thirteen Reasons Why. Mm. That terrible, terrible, terrible. Please don't watch it. Netflix show. Um, don't get ex- excited is not the word, but don't get like, wow, it. Ha- I have to watch it now that you talk about how bad it is, because it's a like. Mm, I'm very upset about this show because I watched it because I thought um, I had heard good things about it. I had heard like, oh my gosh, it's very impactful. And, you know, this girl, I mean, I'm not ruining anything in the fact that the idea is the girl commits suicide at the very onset of the show. And it's the 13 reasons why she committed suicide. That's kind of one of what I knew. Mm -hmm. And yeah, 
That's the premise, but it's not 13 reasons why she committed suicide. It's the 13 people that she points out to being like, you, sir, are the reason that I am now dead. Mm -hmm. And that is the most damaging, horrible thing that she, anyone could do. First off, suicide is a personal choice. It's the wrong one. But it is not because 13 people didn't invite you to the prom type of thing. And I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. But the point is, is that the amount of damage that you could do, that if you told someone, like if I wrote it, if I took my life, or if someone you knew took their life, and they said, by the way, one of the reasons I did this is because of you, like that kind of psychological torture, like I made someone take, like I, like what a horribly damaging thing. And the fact that there's a season two pisses me right off the fact that one of the kids at least they leave a little nebulous i will not be watching season two but they they leave season one nebulous that i think one of the characters that she calls out and yes i'm spoiling don't freaking watch it one of the characters kills themselves and or attempts to because he's so upset that he could have done something that caused this girl grief so he take and i'm like why are we watching this? Why are we telling people? And I watched all 13 episodes because in my head, um, and, the, and, and the protagonist is an... I can't even, I can't even, that's, that's, we, he's a fuddy-duddy, like, I just, I want to take him by his shirt and like, what's wrong with you? Oh my gosh. It, everything that is bad was put into 13 hours of television. <laughs> I watched all of them because I'm also one of those people who's like, no, 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 no. I have to be missing something. Like, I, I, there's something at the end that's going to make it all, like, M. Night is going to come in <laughs> and be like, he was dead the whole time. And I'll be like, yes, I get it now. It makes sense. It doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm like, I can't, I, we could do, like, I'm going to run out Brothers Battery. Don't watch it argue with me in the comments, I will read them and I will come back at you as to why I am right about it's da it's dangerous. It is a dangerous thing and I don't think it is actually helpful because they start the whole show with like, if you or someone you know is depressed, mm -hmm. please call these helplines and this and that and the other thing. And in my head, I'm like, this is actually a promotion in my opinion of like, hey, you could fuck some people up. I'm censoring myself because I'm just so angry. <laughs> You could, you could really ruin other people's lives. So if you're a person, like, it, uh, it's like it gives permission to be bad. Don't see it. Hmm. Jesus Christ, Superstar was so much better. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I... But impactful because of hatred. Yeah. Not impactful good, impactful hate. Impactful hate. Uh, it reminds me of the, there's a scene in one of the Yakuza games I played this year where uh, one of the characters is trying to make a cake for one of the other, their co-workers and she's, yeah. she's <laughs> giving a taste test awesome. to the other place and she accidentally like uses salt instead of sugar and she's like, I, I, I baked it with love and the other characters like doubled over in pain, you know, choking and she's like, why does this cake taste like hate? <laughs> Like you told me that and I thought it was ever. so funny. Alright, so my last <laughs> impactful thing was actually something I, I rather enjoyed. Yay, started with, uh, let's yeah, let's end nicely. Let, let's end on a positive note. And um, what do you think of professional wrestling? I love it. I love it. Okay. Oh my gosh. Ring of Honor, I've been... Lo Shoot. Uh, well, uh, the picture's out, but uh, we're still recording no. sound, so that's okay. Even though we... Oh, go, go, go. That's alright. So, um, we'll just put pictures of us. Yeah. So, um, I like parts of what wrestling, I, I like the, uh, pageantry. I like the athleticism. I like watching people jump around in the ring and do body slams and flips and all kinds of uh, things like that. I've always thought the, I, I like the flamboyance and boisterousness of the characters and over-the-top personalities and the flair and stuff. Some named Rick. Um, <laughs> yeah, That's okay. really funny. <laughs> um, but I've never really enjoyed watching professional wrestling because I think the storytelling has always been unmitigated garbage. 
Sure. Um, oh, yeah. And that's yeah. always turned me up. So I appreciate a lot about wrestling, but I've never liked the storylines of professional wrestling. I've always thought they were crap. Mm -hmm. So I was very, very surprised when I absolutely loved Glow. Yeah, when you told me that I was... The gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Uh, surprised. Two seasons on Netflix. They're making a third season, and I am very much looking forward to it. I was like, wow, they... So I don't like watching wrestling, but I really liked watching a show about wrestling. <laughs> you know, well, and because... you see what goes into like the storylines of the actual show is yeah, very well, interesting. Well, what was great was um, it, the storytelling in Glow is good. Yeah. Unlike the storytelling in you know Monday Night Raw or whatever. <laughs> um, and what was interesting is towards the end of season two, like the you know, penultimate or one of the last episodes of season two is the show that they put on. So oh, that's an episode of Glow that they made in their universe is one of the episodes of the Glow television show. Oh, that's smart. And what's what's what I found very, very interesting is I loved it. But I loved it because I knew all the people behind it mm -hmm. and I knew their enthusiasm and their passion and their drive and it was just wonderful watching your uh, friends and the people you've gotten to know and love come together yeah. and produce something that's stupid as hell but it's it's just wonderful to, to see the people you care about come together and make a thing yeah. even if the thing itself is dumb. Well, I love it, that. It's really great seeing that. And, you know, that episode, divorced from the context of the rest of the show, would have bored the snot out of me. I wouldn't like, it would right. have been just a regular episode of wrestling. I would have been, this is just stupid. But having spent a season and a half with the people behind the production, um, it, it, re it sold it for me. And uh, so I, I think that was probably the most notable thing is is that um reconciling what i do and don't like about professional wrestling and why right uh plus it's just a really good show you know it's interesting and i'll make this quick because they can't see me and that's mm -hmm. not fun because i'm beautiful <laughs> the you know working in new york theater as long as i did um you are part of some terrible 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 theatrical experiences but you're so close and you're in the rehearsal process and you're in those dramaturgical uh discussions about like why this character is doing this and why this and so what you put on stage sometimes never reflects all of that work and all of that backstory and all the stuff that you did and so when you're involved in it and you're so close to it you know how much people worked on it and it kind of stinks when you go out there and you put on a show that, like, at a certain point, there are just some things that no matter, they just suck. Mm -hmm. They suck as uh, plays that, you know, and you put your heart and soul into it. And so sometimes you're so close to it, you're like, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's amazing to me because I've lived that for, like, so long of my life because I did that professionally for so long. It's amazing um, to hear from another side, someone watching it and you just kind of saying like, you liked it because you, f you were with them along the journey. And so that's really yeah. interesting. That's quite a well I liked done. I it because I like the people doing it. Yeah. Now. And that is a fantastically well done show. If that's mm -hmm. what you, that's, I'll have to, I will now have to finally yeah. uh, get unlike, my button uh, here. Kelly doesn't recommend that. 13 Reasons Why, no. but I do recommend Glow. Yes. <laughs> and Captain Underpants. Yes. But not Meet the Feebles so much. No. Anyway, uh, those were the most notable things we saw in yes. 2018. And uh, we'll keep track of what we watched this year and uh, see you next year with what we found notable this year. Absolutely. So, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.